Praise God. <laughs> God is good. And He's in this house. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I can go on and on here. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll see how the Lord continues to lead. That was a good start. I do want to ask you to open your Bibles in the book of 1 John chapter 4. And I won't preach to you too long tonight. Because uh, I've already taken a lot of time. But, uh, but it doesn't matter actually. But you know, I'm, I'm, I do, do, do want to preach God's Word. And I do want to... Um, to also be unconscious in a good way. But in the book of 1 John chapter 4, it says, Beloved, now this is not the book of John, this is the first book of John. Okay. First John, the epistle. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know that the Spirit of God, by this you know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the Spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard of that it is coming. And now it is already in the world. Amen. Little children, you are from God and have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen. They are from the world. Therefore, what they say is from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. And whoever is not from God does not listen to us. From this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, you know, we live in a time and in a day that there are many voices going on around us. There are voices of lies and there are voices of, 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 of truth. And um, I want to share with you tonight that the Bible tells us that, beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits. So the first thing I want to just share is, and I, and I don't want to do it so strong against church people here today, but yes, we should be concerned when somebody comes, uh, you know, in in our church uh, uh, situation and gives us something that the Bible says, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits. Now, let me just share a couple of things with you. There is a man who founded a big religion, and I'm, I'm not going to say what religion, and I'm not going to say who the man's name is, because, you know, some of these things are on YouTube, and, and, and you know, I just want to be sensitive about that. However, uh, this man founded a great religion, a very big religion. Uh -huh. And how it happened was, he, 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 was, he was seeking for, for God. And he was uh, surrounded by many idol gods. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and eventually, he was on this hill, and he says, suddenly, a darkness came upon him. Uh -huh. And it felt like something was choking him pressing all the air out of his body and this thing pushed him and also almost threw him off a cliff and he almost, you know, jumped off the cliff and, and killed himself and when he came back to his, his wife and told him about this, you know, he, he, he felt that he, a demon spirit had taken a hold of him and he was so scared about this and uh, it was after his wife had talked to him for a long time, I believe his wife had been a Christian, she had talk, told him that it was God. In the beginning he thought it was a demon, but she said it was God and eventually he founded a very big religion 
which is very uh, strong even today and is, is, is a very, in many ways, a violent religion. No wonder the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, Amen. but test the spirits. Yes. How do you test them? The Bible says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that says that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Yeah. This specific religion says that Jesus was a prophet. That's right. Amen. But let me tell you what. He was not just a prophet. Yeah, Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Yeah. Do you know what it really means? It means God robed himself in human flesh and dwelt amongst us. Yeah. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And if you deny this thing, you are denying Christ. If you deny this thing, you are of the spirit of the Antichrist. My friends, there's a lot of voices in this world. And how will we know the truth? My friends, I'm not talking about do you baptize, you know, this way or that way. Amen. We can talk about that. I'm not even talking about are you, do you speak in tongues or not. I'm not talking about do you believe in healing or not. You know, these things, you don't have to specifically believe exactly that way to go to heaven. But there's one thing you should never mess with. And that is the divinity of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because I tell you, he who denies that Jesus Christ came into the flesh is of the There was a, a young man who again became hungry for God. And by the way, that both of these men were hungry for God. That's a good thing. But the problem is the devil, if, he, if, he, if there's no truth present, the devil likes to fill that space. Hunger for God is not enough. When you're hungry, you got to go eat the right stuff. And, and, and what is the right stuff? It is the Word of God. You're going to feed yourself with something else. So this young man, you know, also went into some place, you know, there in New York uh, State. And he, uh, and he went there and prayed in the woods. And suddenly a darkness came upon him, he says. Felt like the air was being choked out of him. Does it sound familiar? And suddenly an angel appeared unto him and gave him instructions of where to find a certain book and that in this book he would he would you know learn more about God and these kind of things well brothers and sisters let me tell you you don't have to go find some certain book you know everybody wants to find something else amen people people always want to go find something else they want to go out there and dig up some, some like what about this silly, I'll come back to this story, but what about this silly story about uh, Jesus being married ma married to Mary of Magdalene? What a silly story. Amen. It's just absolutely silly. But if you harp on it and you talk, some, some, eventually people think, well, maybe there is something about this. Amen. It, there is nothing about it. Amen. There is nothing about it. Jesus never married nobody and these children are not the current european kings of europe amen the descendants of jesus christ and mary being the the, the, the the european kings and queens i mean it's just silly my brothers and sisters let me tell you jesus never married he never had children he was the son of god and find all these other things but yes. here, it, here it is so here now suddenly an angel appears to him and gives him revelation where he's going to find this book not only that book but later on he wrote about two more books uh, that, 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 that he had to clarify things and, and so forth and a little later you know with all the problems with the Bible that contradicts these things that this angel said he also by inspiration started changing the Bible 
It's like over here it says this, but that's not really how it was written in the old in the in the original languages. So so he changes that how the spirit and she now shows him to, to do it. And then of course he died before the the the, 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 the book was the the Bible translation was completed the way that he was changing it. Now, I'm not bashing nobody yet to, today, my friends, but, uh, and, and, and there's a lot of, of sincere people that are okay. here, and I've met some of them, and, and, and they are very sincere, and, okay. and, and you know what, uh, you know, by the grace of God, uh, some of them have actually accepted Jesus, and we might be surprised at that acceptance of Christ, because many of these people don't know the deeper things. Okay. They, they accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, but they don't really know some of these okay. deeper things, so, so I I'm not going to be the judge right now, but what I'm saying is beware, beware. because I tell you the Bible says even if an angel yeah, from yeah. heaven yeah. comes and That's teaches right. something yeah. that is contrary to what yeah. we have taught you yeah. in, in the book, yeah. let him be the curse. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because the Bible says Satan himself yeah. transforms yeah. himself yeah. into an angel of light. Yeah. signs and sensations. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. So yeah. Everybody's seeing angels everywhere. Yeah. On, Amen. Now, I, I believe some people have seen angels. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's fine. But let me tell you what. Come on, Do you want to hear what an angel has to tell you? Or would you like to have God tell you himself? Right. God do his word. Right. Yes, I want his word. His spirit can speak within yeah. you. Yeah. You don't need angels. Yeah. No, they Jesus was the Son of God, but at the same time, every one of us, uh -huh. men, yes. that is in this certain denomination, we will also become gods like Jesus was God. Uh -huh. And the same like God Himself, God the Father in that sense, yes. He used to be a man, uh -huh. and then He became a God. Yes. And this is how it works. Mm -hmm. My friends, you've got a big heart to find that out of oh out in the Bible. Yes. And it believe not every spirit. Yes, believe not every spirit. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes, believe yes. not every spirit. Yes. You know, I'm so thankful for the current overseer mm -hmm. of this denomination yes. who has who has declared this year to be a year of the word. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And people yes. are reading through the Bible. Yes. Over a hundred or two hundred thousand people have signed up to read the Bible in a year. Not just by reading a Bible three in a year. I mean, it's not anything to that specific thing. But there's a focus on the Word, my friends. If you want to know the truth, get into the Word. You might not understand everything. Don't, don't worry if you don't understand everything. But keep on reading. And if you don't know what it means, ask the author. Come on. That's the author. His name is Holy Spirit. And he can talk to you. That's it. You tell me Holy Spirit. I know you're pretty busy, Lord. But, but, but Lord, I just don't understand what this means. And let the author himself speak to you. Let me tell you, there, must have, there might have been 40 different authors. You see, the Bible is 66 books. Let me tell you about the miracle of the Bible. The miracle of the Bible is that it wasn't written by one man at one time. Oh, no. right. You know, that really helps not to contradict. Amen. If one man writes it at one time, mm -hmm. that helps with the contradictions. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Although there is a certain one who wrote, the guy that I told you about that, that wrote this other book, mm -hmm. you know, they, they as time went by, they they changed the book 3,000 times. Mm -hmm. But by now you should know that it can't be of God. That's right. If you have to change it 3,000 times. <laughs> Amen. 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 But let me tell you, that was one man writing the book. Mm -hmm. His book. But this book was 66 books were compiled. 66 books were canonized that this is the books from the parchments that have been put together. This is God's work. Amen. And those 
66 books were written by 40 author, authors. Uh -huh. Now let me tell you, if you and I, right now, yeah, all of you like me, but when we start discussing certain issues, some of you are going to get mad at me and I'm going to get mad at you. We're not going to agree on a lot of stuff. I like you, Pastor, but I tell you, I think somewhere you and I will find something that we don't agree with. If you don't agree with me, then then, 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 then I want to know about how's it in your house? Do you and your wife always agree? No. Oh, no. Amen. The only person that I know that, that, that has never had an argument with his wife is my mother's father, my grandfather. And, and he's still alive. His first wife, of course, died in a car accident when my mother was 12. He remarried a little later and, 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 and he married a beautiful wife. And, and, and he said, 40 years of marriage, not had one fight. Glory to God. Amen. Not one fight. But you know, I think I know why. Because he always says, yes, baby. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. If you always say, yes, baby. That's the truth that sometimes. Yes, bro. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I've been oh, I can relate. For 18 years. Can't do that every time. Amen. Can't do that every time. <laughs> but you know what? You and I have, I mean, even the person you love the most, you have disagreements with. Oh, yeah. And agree on everything all the time. Now, how is 40 different authors going to agree with it? If one guy wrote a book, the errors could be less. But yes, 40 different people. To make it worse, they were from different cultures. Oh, well, they might have been Jews. But they were from different cultures. Some of them were in an Aramaic culture. Some of them were in a Babylonian culture at the time. Other ones of them were were were, were, were mosaic and and in Palestine. And, and these were living in different places, different places and different cultures. And to to make it worse, not only was it in different places, but it was in different generations and dispensations. You know, we, we go back 200 years in our history of this country. There's things back then which, which they thought were just fine. It wasn't a big issue at all. But today we, we say it was an issue. And there's things we do, do today that if they look forward, they think, my goodness, what happened to those people? There's an issue. And there's things you're doing today that you think is just fine. But if the Lord there is to come 100 years from now, people are going to look back and say, you know, there's something wrong with those folks. Amen. But... The Bible was written over a period of 1,600 years. The first book was the book of Job, of all things. Right. Amen. Genesis is in the beginning, but Job was the oldest book yes. of the Old Testament. Yes. But here we go, the, over 1,600 years. And 40 different authors, 66 different books. Or I said it wrong, 40 different writers, because there's only one author. Amen. That is the point. That is why there is no contradiction. Right. Or, or seemingly contradictions. If, if, because the Bible is inerrant in its original languages. Amen. Sometimes the translations are, have, have been translated because they don't have the exact word that is in the English that they have in the Greek or the Hebrew or the Aramaic. But when you go back into the Hebrew and the Greek and Aramaic, it all forms together. It is a perfect book. What a glorious thing. My brothers and sisters, thank God for the Bible. Thank God for God's Word. You should read the Bible. You should read it to your family. You should read it to your friends. You should read it with your wife. You should read, read it together and you should take it with you to work and you should read it when you get a chance. You should carry the Bible around so people can see it. That I am not ashamed of my Bible. They might have taken it out of the schools, but I'm not ashamed of my Bible. This is God's Word. I'm taking it to the marketplace. I'm taking it into my place of influence. Hallelujah! 
is gone. Now the sewers went pretty well till now. But now I'm going to pick on your favourite television talk show host. I'm not going to say names. Amen, but let me tell you, I heard her say that she used to believe that Jesus came to die for us on the cross. But now she knows that Jesus came to awaken the Christ in all of us. Now let me tell you, how she used to think was the right way to think. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because Jesus did not come just to awaken the Christ. Because when she says the Christ, it is just the inner you and her way of talking. It is just the inner you that the, there's somebody beautiful in you just, just waiting to be discovered. That's not what my Bible says. My Bible says you were rotten sinner. Well, not rotten, that's my translation, but the job he's got. Amen. But, but, but you are a sinner. And so am I. Now, now, let me just go back. Yes, you were created in God's image. But all that changes when you have sinned and come short of that glory of God. And that is why Jesus came to the cross. So you could die on the cross and take your place because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So, so, so somebody had to die. And you were supposed to die. And when the Bible says die, it doesn't just mean kick a button. Amen. When the Bible says die, it speaks of the second death. If you read the book of Revelation, it will scare you what the second death is. An eternity without God in a place that burns with fire and brimstone. Amen. So, so now somebody had to come and die in your place. Now I'm not saying Jesus burnt in hell or anything because I don't believe that. But what he did do is he came from heaven, uh -huh. wrote himself in human flesh. Yes. He was the second person on earth, or rather the third person on earth without sin. Yes. The first two were Adam and Eve, uh -huh. and then they messed it up. Yeah. But then came Jesus, the yes. second Amen. Adam. Amen. In the exact, and he was a perfect man. Perfect. Yes. yes, he was God, but he yes. was a man when he yes. took on human oh. flesh. Oh. And he dwelt amongst us as a man. Oh. He was tempted in all things just as we are. Yes. Therefore we have an intercessor who knows what we're going through. Yes. And so Jesus was on this world and there was no sacrifice. The sacrifice of the goats and the lambs and everything were there to, to temporarily cover sin. Somebody say cover. But the blood of Jesus don't cover no sin. The blood of Jesus washes it away. And no blood could do what his blood could do. The best man ever in the world could not do what his blood could do. When Jesus came, it was the sinless, spotless Lamb of God whose blood would take away the sin of the world and whose by whose stripes we are healed. He came and died for our sin. And when that blood was shed, my friend, you know when the earthquake happened? I think it's when the first drop hit the floor. Uh -huh. I don't know, I wasn't there. Yeah, maybe that doesn't make sense because he had a lot of blood on him when he was carrying it. Oh, yeah. But at some point, my friend, when he dropped his head, and yeah. from his head the blood oh, yeah. you know, hit the earth. The Bible yeah. says an earthquake tore the rocks out of the mountains oh, okay. and it split the temple veil in yeah. two. Yeah. Amen. And there was darkness on the earth for six hours. Amen. And, 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 and the graves of the dead were opened. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, nobody died like my Jesus died because he was the and in his humanity he died for your sin and mine while in his divinity he was still alive. And then he went down to the to hell and in Hades. Amen. He was not burning. Don't get me wrong. When he was on in Hades, he preached to the spirits in prison. He preached to them Caruso. He told them I have won. He told them I have conquered. He put the devil under his heel. He let captivity captive. Thank you, Jesus. And then after
save you. The religion will never save you. No matter what angel appears to you, he can't save you because he does not have sinless blood. But my Bible says about Jesus that he died on the cross for your sin and mine so that your sin can be washed away. Small building and not a big. Come on, preach it. 
but of yes. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. One day when we stand before Him as our judge, yes. you know, all of what we thought was important in this world is not, not important. Right. One day when we stand before His glory, yes. the Bible says, before Him, heaven and earth flees. Oh, yes. yes. It flees. Oh, uh yes. -huh. When the towers fell in New York, you remember those videos of people who were fleeing? Those people, those same people say, well, if there's a God, I'll just face it. They have no idea. They were running from towers when they were falling, screaming. Amen? But they say that they stand before God and they just face it. You have no concept of God. No, they do Just because Jesus loves me, this I know. Amen? I love Him. And He loves me. Yes. But you better accept him now as your yes, savior. Right. All right. All right. Or face him later yes. as your judge. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Right. And I tell you, my friends, the, the Bible says John was on the, in the spirit on the Lord's day. Yes. And he heard a voice yes. like rushing waters. Yes. And many waters. Yes. And, and he heard the word saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Yes. The beginning at the end. Yes. Sound like like the Toronto or what's that uh, the, up there in New York those those uh, waterfalls, the Niagara. Oh. Amen. Or the Musia Tunya in Zimbabwe. Amen. Hallelujah, Victoria Falls. And and so he hears this and he turns around and he sees a bee. The last time he was seen like that was when Daniel saw him as the Ancient of Days. But this time he looks at this being. The Bible says he had hair as white wool as snow. His eyes were as fire. His face shone like the sun at noontime. He had a garment all the way down to the feet. He was girded about the chest with a golden girdle. His feet burned like brass in a furnace. And out of his mouth came a two-edged sword. And in his right hand he held seven stars. When he saw the Lord, the only thing he could do is, and I fell down before him. Amen. If you saw him like that, you'd fall too. You won't say, well, it is a God of the other space. Yeah. No. Oh no. It's not happening. Heaven and earth flees from him. Amen. Remember the last time the lightning hit so close to your home? Oh, my Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> and you think you can face just go face God? <laughs> lightning is nothing. <laughs> compared to our God. <clears throat> He's majestic and yes. powerful wow. and glorious yeah. and mighty. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. There's no God like him. No, 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 no. Earth shakes when he moves. Oh, yes. Amen. The waters are parted by the blast of his nostrils. Yes, yes. And, 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 and when, he, when he, he rides on the wings of the wind and he breaks the cedars. Yes. Amen. Yes. And the rocks are ripped asunder at his death. Imagine what his resurrection's like. Imagine what his second coming's like. When the trump of God shall sound. And with the trump of an with the shout of an archangel. Amen. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Hallelujah. Us who are alive and remain. Go up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jesus, get hungry for Jesus. Stop playing religion. That's why the world is not interested because of all it sees is a playing religion. I'm not talking about playing religion. I'm talking about being serious with Jesus, to meeting Jesus. Oh, my friends, when you are all alone in your room and you pray and it's like nothing's happening, I just want to quit. I just want to move away and to do something else and, and 
and, and, and go, just go eat something, or, and, and, and it just goes on, and, and suddenly, in the solitude of your room, there's a presencia there, the presencia de Dios, the glory of God, the tervoordigheid van God, the presence of God, He moves there, and suddenly you know there is a God, and I'm in His presence, and His power is there. You might have come into this church in the day, and you might have not even wanted to be here for a while. Your body was tired, and my friend, but suddenly the Spirit of the Lord came and manifested Himself, and He's here in our midst, and He's here in this room. sacrifice 
And tonight I want to ask you, get hot for Jesus. Get hot for Jesus. Right now take a few moments and just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm giving you my everything. I am not going to compromise no more. And I know I'm good people here tonight. I'm not saying if you are there living in sin and whatever. But let me tell you, all of us need a little bit deeper dedication. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I do it too, my Lord Jesus. I dedicate myself deeper to you tonight. I'm going to lead you in a prayer in a minute, but you for now just dedicate yourself to the Lord. Lord, is there something in my life where I am compromising? Am I ashamed of you before my teachers at school? Am I ashamed of you, Jesus, before my friends at school? Am I compromising the things that you do not approve, Lord? Oh God, have I compromised? Have I said things, God, that have hurt your holy name? Have I said things, have I represented Jesus in a way that, that has caused someone else to stumble? I'm not here to bring condemnation on you, I'm here to bring release over you. Because I know what it is to do something or say something that hurts someone else. I know what it is to when I didn't even mean to that I was a jerk. And you know when you were a jerk. And you didn't really give Jesus, represent Jesus the way that He should be represented. I'm not here to condemn you, I'm here to free you in Jesus' name. Because my friends, He says when you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. And cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can't you just confess it all bit tonight? Oh, I'm not here to bring you a sin conscious message. I'm here to release you in Jesus' name. We confess today, God. We confess. We confess before you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. I see Jesus walking up and down this altar. Jesus is touching you himself right now. I just saw Jesus with his hand on somebody. In the spirit I saw him, not in the flesh. Come Lord Jesus, you are so real. Touch someone, God. Touch us all, Lord Jesus. Now repeat after me tonight, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess my sin today. There have been times, Lord, that I have not represented you the way that I should. There have been times that I have brought shame to your name. And I've asked for forgiveness. Cleanse me now. Wash my sins away with your blood. Your word says, a man who never stumbles in his words is a perfect man. But I have stumbled in the words I've said and sometimes I didn't even mean it. But regardless, Lord, I thank you 
that the blood of Jesus cleanses me today. As I confess before you, your blood cleanses me from all sin. Oh God, I refuse to live under condemnation. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I am free from condemnation. There is no more condemnation for him who is in Christ Jesus, who lives not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Today, Lord Jesus, I have confessed, and your blood has washed me. Your blood does not only cover, your blood washes away. Today I'm cleansed. I ask you, Lord, take a coal of fire from off thine holy altar and touch my lips today with that burning coal. Set a new touch of fire, a fresh touch of fire on my soul. Send it now, Lord. Send it now. Touch my lips today with a burning coal. Send a new touch of fire in my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you cleanse me today. Behold, my lips are cleansed. My hands are cleansed. My sins been purged. I'm a new creation. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. I'm born again. I'm new in Christ. I'm dead to my sin. I'm dead to my fleshly nature. And I'm alive unto Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. And yet I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live. I live by faith. In the Son of God. Who loved me. And gave himself for me. Today Lord Jesus. I'm a new creation. And I thank you. For a fresh new start. For doing something great in my life. Now Lord Jesus. I refuse. To be lukewarm. And I will not be cold. I will be hot. For you wish. That I was cold or hot. But not lukewarm. But I'm not going to be lukewarm. And I'm not going to be cold. I'm going to be hot. I'm going to be boiling hot. I'm going to be afraid for Jesus. I'm going to be a burning fire for Jesus. Wherever I go, I will set my world ablaze with the presence of Jesus in my life. Help me, Lord, for I know it's not by my own strength, it's not by might, nor by power, but by thy spirit. And today I thank you that I'll be led by the spirit. Therefore, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God because I'm led by the Spirit. When I'm led by the Holy Ghost, I can do all things for Christ strengthens me in the name of Jesus. I receive it now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? I believe it too. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank you in your own way right now. 